It's 13 minutes before the top of the hour. We'd like to now just carry on that interview. We were hoping that uh, we could and focus on the DRC. So it appears as if the Democratic Republic of Congo is headed for a bleak Christmas as the streets of the country are literally burning from violent protests. This after President Joseph Kabila is on the decision to move the national elections to 2018 with Kabila on the helm or at the helm and uh, those who are objecting to it. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, things heated up uh, here in South Africa where violence erupted at the Congolese embassy in Pretoria when a protest by DRC nationals turned violent. Uh, Benny Mpoko is the DRC ambassador to South Africa, has since closed down the embassy in Pretoria until next year. He joins us for an interview via Skype to keep us uh, in the loop as to the situation both in the DRC and here in South Africa. Uh, ambassador, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for having me. Yeah, a, a couple of things said a little uh, about about you in the previous uh, hour here on the program. We had Jean Boissa, I'm sure you're very familiar with him, the spokesperson for the Congolese community, uh, saying that we shouldn't be calling you ambassador because your term is over along with uh, Joseph Kabila, the president or former president. What's your response to that? That's a totally an irrelevant question. When the President Obama stepped down in the United States, the ambassadors don't go. An ambassador stays on for the continuity. So I think the man doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't follow diplomacy. Uh, he doesn't know how those things are done. When the president steps down, ambassadors don't resign just because the president stepped down. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> ambassador, it is um, president uh, President Joseph uh, Kabila, who has had two terms in office now, and as we know, as the constitution in the DRC is very much so the same as the constitution here in South Africa, saying that a president will only have two terms, um, has now uh, agreed to stay on and uh, elections uh, talk about elections in 2018. What's going on? Why is the the the, the constitution not being followed here? The constitution is being followed completely. Uh, President Kabila is the only person for the first time since 1960 who organized elections in uh, 2006 and 2011. And uh, South Africa really helped us to organize those two elections because the ballot papers were printed here. Uh, Air, South African Air Force was mobilized to uh, ship those uh, tons of uh, ballot papers to Congo. So South Africa helped us. Now, we knew that the, 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 the term of the president was coming to an end. The dependent electoral commissions in any country, including South Africa, they are the ones who organize elections. So since 2011, this issue was being debated within uh, the independent electoral commissions. International community was involved and so forth. But Congo, is the, just not another country. It's the size of Western Europe with no infrastructure. So what the Electoral Commission, with the support of the parliament and the presidency, decided this time we want to do it right. Because the two elections, we have few problems. The next one must be right. Uh, meaning that the, the, roller, the voter registration must be updated. Yeah. The young people, about 15, 10, 15 million of them, have come to age to vote, they should be included to vote. The Congolese in diaspora, they must be included, and so forth. The Electoral Commission estimate will cost almost a billion dollars to do that, and the international community committed to, to fund about uh, two-thirds of that. Yeah. The DRC government committed to, to fund uh, the process uh, in the tune of uh, 300 million. Up to now, the DRC government had dispersed 200 million, but the international community has not uh, 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 provided anything, not one single dollar. Yeah. So in view of that, the parliament, the politicians, and so forth decided, let's do it on our own. We'll fund it ourselves, but it's going to take time. That's <laughs> why the Independent Electoral Commission suggested that uh, uh, the next possible date for the elections will be April 2018. Mm, a dialogue mm. was held in Congo uh, between the opposition, the civil society, and the government, and it was agreed that that's the date. Now, yeah. there were some let's... opposition leaders, there were some parties didn't agree to it, and we have reopened the dialogue to find a way forward. As yeah. we speak, yeah. the Catholic Church is in charge, is negotiating 
with everybody to find the suitable uh, date for the elections. The Constitution says the incumbent president only steps down when the new one is fully elected and inaugurated. That's the Constitution of the DRC. So we have not violated the Constitution at all. Let's, the Ambassador, let's just look at what's happening with the people in Congo, though, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are suffering. 20 people have been killed so far. They're very opposed to what's going on with what you're talking about and, uh, and the president staying on. Um, and, and as far as I've read, these talks that the Catholic Church are meant to be overseeing are breaking down and very, very fast. Um, there's reports that Twitter has been uh, shut down, the internet access is not working, that uh, Facebook, social media, all forms of communication coming out of the country are being hampered so that people are not really getting an understanding of what's really happening. Why this clampdown on the people and why the killing of innocent lives of police using live ammunition as well? Perhaps you can make us understand this. You see, we are in democracy. People are free to demonstrate to uh, voice their opinion. That's t totally normal. But there is no state, no country will allow people to go and break property, destroy properties, kill the policemen and so forth. A, a peaceful demonstration is welcome. That's part of our constitution, part of our democratic process. But we cannot, a, a, a responsible government cannot allow people to go looting shops, burning buildings and so forth. Law yeah. and order must be up, upheld. So that's what's going on. Yeah. What about here in South Africa? Because the same thing was happening and those scenes were seen outside of your embassy. You had to, in fact, close the embassy until further notice. Well, until next year, um, it brought about unintended consequences that those who want to travel to the DRC are not able to get visas from the embassy. What's going to happen now? You, met, you saw the pictures. Those people came to demonstrate. If it was a peaceful demonstration, there's no problem. But their intention was to come and burn down the building. Their intention was come to harm the personnel. I, I'm their prime target. They even managed to steal a weapon from the police that were protecting the embassy. And once they got their weapon, they said, ha ha, now we have a tool to do exactly what happened in Ankara. And you know what happened in Ankara. So we cannot tolerate a violence. People can demonstrate peacefully, but the, the violence uh, should not be accepted. The reason I closed the embassy, because we don't have access to the embassy, because you saw the pictures there. Yeah, so yeah. we have no access to the embassy. I'm, uh, embassy will be uh, open as soon as uh, 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 we, we feel stable, we feel uh, um, protected. And I think the police is doing the police here are doing a very good job in yeah, protecting yeah. the embassy. And yeah. uh, as soon as uh, that's calmed down, we open the embassy. I didn't say that we we will only open the embassy next year. Yeah. We are very conscious of the fact that the people would like to travel to DRC. We need to facilitate that. Oh. But under conditions of instability, it becomes impossible. I cannot expose my personnel to violence because I already lost a staff member in the 2011 through the demonstration. They they stormed the embassy. And one of my staff members was killed. I don't want the repeat of that. Yeah. That's why I closed the embassy temporarily, waiting for the situation to return to normal. All right, Ambassador, we have to unfortunately leave it there. There's so much more that we need to talk about, but we'll leave it there. We will pick up this conversation. And I think the big question is, why was there no succession plan in place already? And, uh, and we could see this kicking in and uh, another president taking over and overseeing uh, these processes that the ambassador was talking about. But, but like I say, we've got to move on. Uh,